This is a crash cart. It's painted red so that everyone can easily see it, no matter where it is in the building, when we call a code. A code in different hospitals represents somebody that needs resuscitation, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So if you're in that bad state and one of us has to put the paddles on the chest, break open the crash cart, that usually means that you are probably in a bad state getting to the hospital. Nowadays, we try to prevent people from having to ever get to those points. There's an acronym that you'll see across the United States called FAST. And FAST is for, it stands for facial droop. That's usually when you see one side of somebody's face go down like this, or the eye droop down. That's for the F. A is for arm weakness. That's when you can't lift the arm up, and it's not because of pain and the rotator cuff tear, it's because I just lose weakness. You can certainly have it with the leg too, but it's easy to remember. F is in facial droop. A is in arm weakness. S is in slurred speech. If you hear somebody and they're just not making sense, or the, the words are coming out jarbled, that could be because of what's going on in the brain. And then T is for telephone call immediately time. You have time to save somebody's life before that progresses. And believe me, I've seen a couple of these strokes, whether they're hemorrhagic or infarct strokes. I've seen a couple of them progress. They started off as a little droop and everybody's like, oh great, you have a stroke, get some aspirin. But then they've got to the point where the bleed in the brain continues on and death occurs and you can't resuscitate. Or you have to get to my friends in neurosurgery, burr a hole in the brain and let the, the blood out. So it's very important that we find these things when they're first starting. There's a good chance that if you're finding a stroke or a stroke victim, as the stroke is evolving, it's called, and if you reverse the reason for the initial stroke, you might be able to save the patient a lifetime of disability. The problem is, again, that's what the T stands for. Time is of the essence to make that phone call. And if you don't do it in time, you'll probably stop the stroke, but you'll also have somebody who can't talk, somebody who needs help with feeding himself, somebody who can't contribute to a productive workforce. Uh, one of the things, and that's why I want to talk about it, all my videos are mostly for taking care of disease prevention in healthy ways, aside from just taking prescription medicines. One of the best ways to prevent a stroke, especially a hemorrhagic stroke, again I mentioned two different types, one is when you bleed from the blood vessel, that's that's intact, you'll bleed into the tissue surrounding it, the brain tissue. There's no room for that, so brain tissue gets squashed. So usually that's because of high blood pressure, or it's usually because of weakness in the arteries, in the arterial wall. They're not supple, and they're more like cardboard, and when you have a blood vessel that's cardboard, even a little increase in pressure, too much salt, too much anger, um, headstands, that will cause that blood vessel to rupture and the blood will go into the brain. That's a hemorrhagic stroke. So all you guys that have high blood pressure that supposedly are just from being white coat hypertension, you don't like going to the doctor's office, they always jack up the blood pressure when you're in the doctor's office, comes down when you're outside. You guys are the ones that have to be careful because those high blood pressure readings that you're getting when you get older, especially if you smoke, you don't exercise, you're overweight, or you have a disease that you're not addressing, those blood pressures will eventually lead to a stroke. That's why we get so hot and bothered with taking care of high blood pressure. It's not just because we want to put you on medicines. We are trying to avoid a stroke 10 to 20 to 30 years down the line. This is important. If you don't take care of it, you might get by without it, but you also might wind up with a stroke. The other part or the other thing that causes stroke is an infarct. That's when a blood vessel, just take that blood vessel I told you before, all the blood vessels come from the heart. They pump blood to the brain. When that plumbing system gets clogged with a clot, then every tissue after that gets no more blood, and it's ischemic, so the brain tissue dies. That's because of big pieces of cholesterol and or bacteria that come from either the heart or the blood vessels up here because they're too caked on with cholesterol plaques or fat or you're on a bad diet, processed food, smoke, alcohol. 
when those little, if you have a blood vessel like this and it's lined or caked on with cholesterol plaques, one of those plaques breaks off and goes downstream, it's going to end up in a tight portion of the brain that's going to cause an ischemic stroke. And that too, again, why do we say watch your cholesterol? Why do we say watch your blood pressure? The same reasons. This is more of a case of the cholesterol issues and the plaques that form. Inflammation, inflammation and cholesterol, inflammation, cholesterol, and high blood pressure, they all add. So you can see there's a trend here. you got to stay healthy. If you think that these diseases are only for 90 and 80 years of age, i, I got news for you. We're seeing people in their 50s. It's probably because the American population is getting unhealthy. But it's also in, in part due to doctors not telling their patients about why we're treating all those things. When I hear people say, I'm not a pill taker, eh, that's fine. If you're not a pill taker, you better eat better than me. I'm wearing my kale shirt. This is kale. Kale, if you look at the Andy and Mandy score, is the, it's, it's given a, a score of 1,000. That's the best you can get with Joel Furman's rating system for antioxidant foods. If you eat a really good food or a really good diet, and you're totally organic, and you exercise, and you watch your weight, then you'll probably be okay. But that really doesn't rule you out. Disease does not have a preference, but if you can decrease your chances for disease, you're better off than the other guy who's not watching his weight, not exercising, not seeing a doctor. That guy is bound, he's destined for disease, whereas the other guy that's watching his weight, communing with his family, uh, getting out to nature, that person is destined for perfection and or a ripe old age of 90 to 100. So you choose. You can either get to 90 or 100 with, without any medicines and happiness, or 70, 60 with a whole bunch of medicines and just be so angry at everything, including yourself. So remember fast. Remember that before you even have to think about fast. If you have to do it for your family members, I always say the medicines and the things and the surgeries that you can do in the hospital are great. I like acupuncture to speed up the healing process. I still like leading a good life after the healing process because once you have a stroke, the possibilities for a heart attack and another stroke are still there. 80% of the people that have problems with a stroke will also have a heart attack and vice versa. So you still have to cut back and reverse. So why not just do it now instead of waiting for getting out of the hospital? Uh, these are the important th things to consider. If you're leading a good life, then good for you. If you have to take care of your parents, then uh, you're going to be stressed out. But um, you can still guide them as far as what they should be doing, what they can be doing in addition to the doctor giving them aggressive medicines for blood pressure, and then giving them blood thinners or uh, giving them plav plavix, which is uh, uh, something that helps with platelet plugs. But you can, again, you can maximize on exercise, you can maximize on nutrition, you can maximize on relaxation therapy, the anti-inflammatory lifestyle. <laughs>
as a one-time exposure versus taking a risk, especially if you haven't taken care of yourselves or if your family member hasn't taken care of themselves, it would be worth the one-time exposure. Um, I usually say at the sacrifice that if I'm going to make the diagnosis and make sure that you're safe, from that point on you have to invest in the change of life that's necessary so that we don't have to go through this dance again. Uh, eventually it's going to be an MRI and that's $5,000 to $6,000 test and eventually after that if you haven't taken care of yourself, if the blood pressure is not addressed, if the cholesterol is still high, if the smoking still con uh, continues on, it's going to be seeing a neurologist for chronic medicines and or uh, neurosurgeon for intervention. So all these things are very important. These are all warning signs on what to do if you haven't been taking care of yourself or warning signs that even if you have care, good care, there might be something that still slips through. Disease and uh, catastrophe has no preference as far as whether you're rich, poor, exercise, thin, fat. It's just that when you take care of yourself, the chances are much more slim than if you don't take care of yourself and uh, taking on the risk of death or disability.